Nope. All right, so we went live online. It's 4.59, so we'll give it a minute for our online guys to get on. We have volume this week, so that's good. And it is five o'clock, so we will get started. Uh, this week we are talking about, I always forget to click the screen, SSEs and job competency. Um, pretty short, again, straightforward, and then we'll have Sal do his little shop moment as well. Um, so what is a short service employee? Um, an employee is considered an SSE, short service employee, uh, for usually the first six months of employment. Uh, they need to be supervised and trained to do their jobs accurately and proficiently. Supervisors um, need to be aware who the SSEs are and understand their competency levels so the employee is not asked to do a job they're not trained to do. Uh, obviously, when supervisors are aware of this, we can organize any jobs that need to be put together according to experience levels. Uh, this prevents, obviously, incidents from happening so employees can be monitored um, and, again, not doing anything they're not trained to do. Uh, so mentors, we mentoring is basically placing an SSE with an experienced worker. This is where our training program comes into play. Um, trainers need to also understand the experience level of their trainer trainees, provide supervision and instruction, and not allow SSEs to perform jobs they haven't been trained to do. So while they're in the training process, we make sure that they are being trained in proper policies, procedures before they actually do it on their own. Um, I'm really excited for this, uh, for the few trainers that we have currently in the program. We're adding a few more this next week or two. Um, these trainers in this program have a special commitment to Prairie. I'm super excited for them to move on with this program that we've kind of reevaluated. Um, they understand that these incoming employees, these SSEs, are kind of that future wave of Prairie, um, and that we as a company are only as strong as our weakest link. Um, so, moving on, SSEs, so we went over the mentors, now our SSEs are short service employees. Uh, same as supervisors, we want to make sure coworkers are also aware that SSEs may need help or instruction to perform a job. Um, SSEs, so our under six month employees, need to understand that uh, they should ask questions whenever they arise or whenever they're unsure about any aspect they come across. This spans from their first day of training uh, to any other day in the period that they work here. Um, they should also receive training on our policies and procedures, any housekeeping and reporting procedures. Each of these things also differ for different sites as well, so we want to make sure they're getting trained in those too. Um, so on to job competency. So competency is possessing the required skills, knowledge, and qualifications for a job. And job competency is how you apply those skills and knowledge to perform your job. So job competency is used as an indicator to show supervisors whether you should be rewarded for your performance, assisted in improving it, or removed from your job. When job competency is evaluated correctly, both the company and you benefit from it. So um, this is something we're constantly doing throughout your employment, obviously. Um, we'll go to this next uh, slide here. These are general competencies, so these are just kind of... Uh, things across the board as an employee, not specifically pertaining to the specific job you do. All of that is done, um, I'm sure all of you have seen, at least drivers have seen those training packets that you guys do, that gauges where you're at at the end of your training and how competent you are in policies and procedures. These general competencies um, you see more uh, in your annual review type things that we do. So um, I'm going to throw in our safety focus phrase for those of you online. Um, safety focus phrase is six months of green. So you're a green hat for the first six months. Um, so we'll go through this list here. Being flexible means adjusting your personal work style to meet the needs of the job, responding with a positive attitude, and being open to learning new ways to do a job. Uh, Detail-oriented is being thorough, having concern for all areas of the job, no matter how small, monitoring and checking yourself throughout the job so nothing is overlooked, and always following procedures and standards. 
Being a team player means showing your initiative to cooperate and actively be part of a team, participate in meetings and discussions, and helping find solutions to problems that may come up during a job. If you're committed to safety, it means you integrate safety management into every job. You comply with all safety policies and procedures of both the company and the industry, and you complete all environmental safety and health training. You also take responsibility for safety. What I mean by that is all of these trainings and topics can only go so far when I present them to you. Um, it's basically in your hands uh, to do the job safely on your own out in the field every day. Uh, effective in communicating means you communicate your thoughts and concerns, present yourself clearly and accurately when communicating with others, use written materials or visual aids to reinforce what you're saying, and ask questions be sure your message is understood correctly. Obviously, all of this should also be done respectfully. There's a difference in just communication and respectful communication. Uh, responsive to emergency mean, emergencies means you, first and foremost, perform your duties in a way that prevents and minimizes any safety hazards. Uh, in addition to that, you know who to contact in the event of an emergency, understand emergency action plans, and communicate that safety and environmental awareness is a priority. Being a problem solver means you anticipate problems and think about how a problem and its solution will affect everyone. So basically, are you asking what if and thinking about the things you will do if that what if happens. Uh, you gather all the information available before making decisions, take responsible action even under pressure, and notify dispatch and supervisors of problems in a timely manner. Uh, being professional means you take care not to offend others, practice good hygiene, and have a positive impact on coworkers. And lastly, reliability is the level of dependability demonstrated in all aspects of your job. You show commitment and dedication by completing the job, your punctual and fulfilled commitments made to the company and your coworkers. Uh, so like I said, the majority of these are kind of things you do in your day-to-day, -day, how you carry yourself, and I mean, you all have seen those annual reviews that you do. Each of these kind of come into play during that annual review. Um, so these should be characteristics you're striving for each day out on the job in a part of your work day. Again, pretty straightforward. That's SSEs and job competency. Sal, you're up. <laughs> Just click the picture. Do you want me to click the picture? Okay, yes, I will. Pretty basic. throw something in real quick too. So proper PPE. Yeah, at proper times as well. 
Would this be a proper time to wear gloves? No. No, it would not. In fact, I know it's better to do that while it's running, because I don't think that was a real safe comment. What's that? I'm doing that while it's running. You don't have an option. <clears throat> Why don't you have an option? I've been doing it for 10 years, so I didn't have a half well, then go quarter, ahead. To a quarter to, you know, a little over a quarter to turn the piece, and it was still leaking, and when it's off, but when these guys drop the head of a wrench in that shaft, comes out of there, that can be a real hazard. Mm -hmm. You're right, it could be, but any time that PTO is moving, it's a hazard. But those pump that's seals... Why shut it, that's why I'm saying shut it off, so it's not moving and not a hazard. Yeah, but like I've seen, is when the pump is shut off, and somebody tries to tighten those up, they don't do it right, they fire it back up, and then all of a sudden they're spinning that rope seal in there and just ate the whole thing. Because they're not used to doing it. Ninety percent of the time, when we, when we do take a rope seal out from somebody's head. Well, and, and again, I mean, there's a lot of variables that are going to come into play with that. And I see what you're saying. I get that. What we're basing this off of is a numbers game. What it's come down to is ninety nine percent of the people that have done these and showed us how to how to test this. This is how they ran it. Um, again, complacency is the issue. Um, a lot of people understand that when they they do this, they need to be careful. They need to they need to watch things, and that's what we're shooting for. That's what we're doing the training on it. However, um, it's going to come down to where you're comfortable. Because again, I don't want to put anybody in fear and have any issues or stress or tension when they're doing this. If you're comfortable doing it your way, that's fine. Understand, in the event that there's an issue and you're doing it your way, it's going to fall back on you. Now, the odds of that happening are minimal, right? I mean, the odds of it being that bad are minimal. It's just that in the event that, that's where, where we'll be held on that one. Um, as far as the tooling that's going to come with this, there'll be smaller wrenches. Um, again, the whole idea was to not lose things. Um, uh, and it was a cost, a cost effective way to, of, of making sure this happens. Um, uh, as far as how we do that here in the shop, uh, we'll put it together, adjust it, uh, run it. We're not going to know if it's going to be leaking like that. Um, that one has been ran for a while, worked its way loose, and that's why it, it needed that, that adjustment. Um, I do agree with what Jason said as far as them moving because you do need to have fluid moving through there to see if you are leaking things. However, it's going to come down to how your where your safety level is. If you don't feel confident doing it like that, then don't. Don't do it because that's where you're going to get hurt. Um, uh, the other side of it too is uh, we're doing this so we don't have to slow you guys down any. Um, the whole point was if it's leaking that bad, um, and we have to come out, that's downtime, you got to wait for us. That's the whole thing I'm getting back to, us going from here out to there. Whereas if this is one thing you can take care of here on your own, uh, it's going to save everybody that much more time. Um, so again, you know, work with it, play with it, get comfortable with it. Um, just don't get uh, complacent with it, that's all. Too so. tight. Not too tight. Yeah. The biggest issue with too tight is it'll dry everything out and then you'll have heat transfer. Uh, when you have metal and you have heat transfer, it's got to go somewhere, and it will. Um, that's where you seize things up. Uh, you know, when metal gets hot like that, it starts at the base of that shaft and works towards the whole shaft, and it works its way out. The shaft can take a lot. Um, everything else around it can't. It's a thinner metal. It'll it'll bite whatever can get a hold of when it's hot. So and that collar is pretty thin, too. You can break the ears off that collar. Absolutely. Absolutely, and, and we've seen a couple of those break before too. And again, that's why the moving parts in this are what we're concerned about. Um, the shaft, again, it's it's stable; it's not going anywhere. Um, the two ear, the two uh, fingers that go over top of that that you adjust, those are moving. The little clip that holds it in, that's all moving, you know, uh, in and out. Same with the bolts. Uh, again, this is to save everybody time. Um, timing of the essence. That's what we're after here. Uh, again. We're wanting everybody to be safe and take your time and do this the right way. So please, by all means, don't rush in and think you know what you're doing and jump in and do it. Uh, it's moving. It's going to be a whole different thing. Um, I'll be honest with you. Uh, I done it with it moving one time, and I got to tell you, just like he said, I was very nervous because you're right. Everything you just said went through my head. Uh, now I, I lucked out. I'm more um, visual. I've seen it happen. So but I'm just, a worst case that, scenario guy, just like you. So it can be really screwy. <laughs> Absolutely. What's up, Tony? So I got a couple of things. I just want to say, point out, just because it kind of sounded confusing to me. I think what Chad's saying is like, 
Like, he has to use when he's running, you can see it dripping, right? It's amazing. You have to pump and pull up and flash that level. Then you can do two quarters, turn back on the stop. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, Absolutely. That, that's what I'm saying. There, there's there's so many ways to go about this. Again, find what's comfortable for you. Because it's still going to find the, the end result is what we're after. How you do it is up to you. You know what I'm saying? I can't, we can't make you run it and have it doing movement. We can't make you stop. What we can do is give you a platform on how to work at a foundation for you to build on. Because Tony's right. You can do the exact, just like you said, run it so far, stop, adjust, fire back up. Same thing. The whole goal is as long as we stay focused on that, is to slow the drip down. Because you're right, you do want fluid moving through there a little bit. It's, they think it's acceptable to have six to eight drips per minute. That keeps it lubricated from burning up, just falling out. I'd sure rather waste that minute counting drips than hours waiting for us to get out there to <laughs> place the rope. I mean, that or quickly repeat, drop every six to ten seconds. Mm hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Tony. <laughs> Can we get a little bit more detail on it, Steve, next time? <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, is there anything online? Any questions? Uh, no. Do you know about No? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Really? Okay. We're good to go. That'll work. Thank you. Thanks, you. Okay, uh, last thing then. We have our ops notes here quick. Just one thing. Uh, a little bit of housekeeping here. Uh, Getty boxes and drip pans are not to be used as garbage cans. Jason has gotten quite a few calls from the lax about trash being left in them. Please take your trash with you and clean up after yourselves. Uh, same note, Casper Yard is not a personal garbage can either. We had a lot of employees spending a lot of time cleaning up that yard, and it's already a mess. And this isn't the type of stuff that just blows in with the wind. This is stuff that's deliberately dropped in the yard and just not picked up. Um, so again... Please pick up after yourselves. Let's take care of our space and our other customer space as well. That is all. Sweet. All right, thanks, guys. Make sure you're signing the roster before you leave online. Make sure you're filling out the form. Appreciate it. Yeah.